All right, guys, Boy 32 here. Check it out. Today is uh, September 11th, 2019. Uh, yeah, 18 years ago, we Americans, we lost a lot of friends, a lot of family members. And in the 18 years in the aftermath, we've lost thousands more. Uh, all of our dear brothers in arms and sisters and those individuals who went off to fight and those individuals who are still fighting today, even though they left the battlefield years ago. The memories of your best friend or somebody you may know who uh, basically disappeared in front of your eyes or something like that. We're not going to get into that. But uh, All right, so anyway, um, last night I sat and watched the Judiciary Committee with, uh, what is that guy's name? Jared Nadler leading the way, sitting up on his podium and uh, basically disregarding anything that any Republican uh, had to say. And I, I don't think that our country right now could be more divided than it is. And it, it's, it's sad. It really is. And, and unfortunately, I don't think it's going to get any better. Uh, the, the, the left, the Democrats have set a precedent. The uh, left wing, and I'm not talking about the, just Democrats in general. I'm talking about these whack jobs uh, who are, their endless mission is to condemn and even so go further as to condemn the people who uh, voted for uh, the, the president or anybody else who's a Republican. Uh, you know, so it, it's when you start hunting down and creating blacklist, it sets a precedent. And I will tell you this right now you will continue to divide this country until the division can no longer be ignored and things are going to happen. So anyway, last night I sat there and I watched the Judiciary Committee go through and vote on three new bills that they're going to introduce to the House floor uh, this week. And it, it, for me, it was heartbreaking because, you know, you, you saw these people. They didn't care. They didn't want to hear an opposing story. It is what it is. and We're going to do this thing. And uh, there were there were three uh, bills that they were introducing, and I'm going to go through those individually now because they, they do affect you, me, and everybody else. Uh, one was House Resolution 1236, Extreme Risk Protection Order Act, uh, and we all know what the red red flag is, uh, and and it's basically what they want to do is they want to put put forth a federal uh, red flag law, and uh, they will vote on it. It will probably pass the House. It will not pass the Senate. No, I say that. I think this one will probably pass the Senate because there are several of the uh, Republicans out there who are pro-red flag. And, and you know what? I guess they have to be, in a sense, because there are certain people out there to go, we have to do something. They're right. I just don't think the red flag or even the TAPS Act or whatever they call it is the right thing to do because the individual loses their constitutional rights without representation and without being able to defend themselves with this thing called due process. They knock on your door, they seize your firearms, and it's up to you to prove the fact that you haven't done anything wrong or you're capable. And this extends to the individuals, family, friends, law enforcement, and they were talking last night about, you know, well, the suicide rate, these, uh, our veterans are killing themselves left and right, so, you know, uh, we should be able to take the firearms away from the veterans. And I kid you not, that's exactly what the guy said. Now, how many veterans do you know will now reach out to a fellow brother because in fear that somebody's going to say something and take their firearms from them? Thanks a lot, Congress. You arrogant asses. I, I kid you not. The people that were up there that were speaking, it was like spewing trash. Cicilline, Swalwell, uh, Brown Lee, this guy named Deutsch. There's another jackass who actually turned around and was looks trying to stare down a Republican as he spoke. An arrogant ass. The next one. This is going to affect you and I both. I don't think that this is going to go through the Senate. I don't think it'll be even introduced. But the whole thing is now, this is a political thing that they're doing. Because of the election year that's coming up, they can now say, well, the Republicans didn't want to do anything. They're evil. They're bad. Uh, anyway, North Carolina, they had a congressional win. Dan McCready, 
uh, lost to the other Dan. I kind of can't remember the guy's name. But it's been a busy day. But even still, the, the Democrats were like saying, well, he didn't win by the biggest margin, so this really wasn't a win for the Republicans. I'm like, whatever. Uh, so this one is 1186 Keep Americans Safe Act. And this is to regulate large capacity magazines. Representative Deutsch and the rest of the Democrats on the Judicial Committee all signed on for this thing. So what they want to do is they feel that by banning the further purchase, now let's just say, I'm going to clarify this so don't, don't kill the messenger here. It's not saying you have to turn them in like California. Okay, if you had them, you had to destroy them or take them out. What they're saying is that you can no longer further purchase them. Uh, they're just, they can't be used anymore. You can use them, but you can't buy them anymore. The further purchase, which means there's 100 million of them out there. So, uh, actually, I have a thing on the top of my, <laughs> I know this is, okay, this is ridiculous, but I do have a thing on my website uh, for the Gun Mag Warehouse and, and uh Palmetto State Army is running a pretty good deal on mags right now, too. Uh -huh. Sorry about that. I just had to do it. Uh, so in any case, uh, do I think this is going to hit the uh, Senate floor? No, I don't. I don't think it's going to be brought before. I don't think Mitch McConnell is going to entertain this idea. Uh, the next one, this is, uh, this is a dangerous one. Uh, and this was introduced by, uh, I think, Cicilline, uh, a couple of the other guys. Hold on. Right here. Uh... This is called, yeah, this is Cicilline. Disarm Act. Disarm Hate Act is what it's called. And let me read this to you, and you guys interpret it the way it's read. I'm not going to read the full bill. It's the title. I'll put the link down below to congress.gov so you can read each one of these yourself. So you educate. And the biggest thing, guys, is educate yourself on this stuff, okay? They're already trying to go for an assault weapons ban. It's been introduced on the floor. Uh, I think they've actually voted on it, but it will never be introduced onto the Senate floor. Uh, okay, so H.R. 2708, to prevent a person who has been convicted of a misdemeanor hate crime or received an enhanced sentence for a misdemeanor because of hate or bias in its commission from obtaining a firearm. What, what the hell does that mean? You say something hateful on YouTube or Facebook now, uh, they're going to come and charge you with a crime and then, hey, guess what? You can no longer have a firearm or you can't obtain a firearm. A misdemeanor, no longer a felony, but a misdemeanor account. This is overreach of the government at its best. And their whole reasoning behind this is that, well, there were so many people we could have stopped beforehand if we would have enacted on this or given law enforcement the tools they could to act on these things. So guys, my whole thing is, is that I watched this entire thing in disgust as they belittled there was no intent on listening to anything. They were going to do what they wanted to do because they could. And the Republicans were calling them out on it. Big time. So whoever it was that had the Second Amendment is my gun permit on his mug, I dig that guy. Army officer. Who a sir. Outstanding. So anyway, guys, there, there's a lot of things going on in the next day or so. We're going to see some things, some activity going on. It has to go to the Senate floor, and then uh, there will be some stuff that comes around off of this stuff because the politicians feel the necessity that they actually have to do something that warrants their job and their salary. There's people in there who are 79 and 80 years old who have been in politics for 40 to 50 years and they're now multi-millionaires so how the hell did that happen anyway uh, it was an interesting thing to watch for sure so anyway let me know what your thoughts are down below guys uh, I'm digging this politics stuff it's a lot of fun we've got a lot of things going on we're not stopping shooting now uh, we've got a good barrel review coming out I do the endoscope thing on the Ballistic Advantage Premium Barrel, and we uh, did a little side-by-side -side comparison with one of the most uh, outstanding things I've ever seen from uh, Palmetto State Armory. With that being said, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Oh, these are my new digs right here. My new home away from home. It's Codeboy32.
Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless his men, women, uniform 24 7 for our freedoms. Freedom's not free. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share, like, subscribe, and all the other neat jazz. I am out of here. Y'all be good. Take care.